early part of their round, Jordi Wilkin, Wilbert Bow. Nice through there, and they go away from fence four, and they have to get to the uh, through the compulsory passage that's been set by the uh, team here, Peter, Peter Hazenbola, the cross country course designer. There's those angled brushes at uh, five A and B for Jordi Wilkin and Wilbert Bow. Nicely done through that. As uh, a time also in for Roland Pulsinger, Tiefenhoff's Lavellino, 11.6 time penalties, 48.4 for him. team riders Emiliano Portale actually uh, their first team rider had a super country run in 626 four time penalties so uh, he's put in a really really strong performance then 42.8 his total score fastest round that we have seen by far. Turn of Roxanne Gonfar, Galaxier du Filion, the first of our Swiss riders. Point zero, her score coming forward. She was really unlucky to just roll one pole in the show jumping yesterday. To add to her dressage score. that absolutely look to love his job and particularly the jumping phases. Big hedge box, big wide fence. It comes quite tight off the turn. You've got to really respect some of these turns out on course because the last thing you would want is a unfortunate slip on the flat and another just to take the loop but actually finding it much trickier gets it but would have uh, taken considerably longer rather than going on the the direct two strides but they play it safe and gone far, comes back uh, towards those big white rails. Just got in a little bit close to the first of those. Just takes them out of their rhythm slightly. As a reminder that the leader in the clubhouse is Emiliano Portale for Italy, 42.8. Italy off to a fantastic start in the team standings. As Roxanne gone far round in just a second the first of those waters this big log box first Galaxie to fill 12 years of age in 27th position on that score of 40 
say from the start, it is uh, one of the leading contenders. Lara de Lida Kirkemeyer, T. Danville, the second of our Belgian riders, 29.9 at their starting score in fourth uh, position on the uh, leaderboard. Gordy Wilkin, Wilbert Bow, heading towards home. He's through that uh, final water, the third of the three waters out on course at 18 A and B. Just tuning in here to Monte Libretti, a very warm welcome to you. We've got some fantastic cross country action to bring you. Big bowl jump down into the water for Roxanne gone far down at the 14th. 14th, I should say, the 11th of the three waters behind her now let's take a look and see if we've got a uh, time for the second of our italian team riders we have fosco gerardi goes around in 629 5.2 time or for, for the italian team because they've got two pretty quick rounds so far and they've still got two solid scores to bring forward Delida Kirkemeyer, De Candy Darville, Lara, who's been a stalwart of the Belgian team. She is one of the counting scores for Belgium, 29.9. They've got one horse home safely. That was Senna Viaka and Google Van Alsingen. Wasn't the quickest, so 10.8 time penalties to add. And I have to say, Lara doesn't look like she's going out all guns blazing. It could well be that actually a clear round on the board is the highest priority at this stage. We'll watch this space. Could be deceiving. Horse that uh, was so impressive in the show jumping. You can see the technique. Gave uh, the coloured poles plenty of air time. As she comes to the first water at nine. on top. One, two, three. Still gets the three strides very easily. So, uh, if you are just tuning in to Monte Libretti, a very so you were in the second rotation of team riders. For Belgium on that very impressive score of 29.9 out on course. And unfortunately, not having the easiest of times. Humble, so. Uh, She'll have to regroup now as she goes into the water at uh, 11.
for Italy now coming forward on a score of 40.0, a third of the Italian riders, and actually they were the drop score coming forward. But a fast clear here would certainly put Italy in a really, really strong position. As the uh, Spanish rider, Mario Nicolas Garrido, just unfortunately rather grinds to a halt at uh, 9B brush on top of the bank he'll have to come round and represent to that isn't a black flag alternative for this fence so first that we've seen run into problems at that uh, top element gets it at the second time the ground slopes away on landing so perhaps the horse didn't quite understand the question but acrobate style gets it at the second time of asking Portale, who was our fastest, 6.26, so uh, some 10 seconds over the optimum, 42.8 is the clubhouse leader, waiting for a time for Lara de Lida Kirk and Maya, which should be in shortly, she's heading on towards the finish. Coming to the water at uh, 11 ABC, Acrobate start. And really nicely done through there, actually. As good as any that we've seen. Mario Nicolo Garrido. Matteo Orlandi, the third of the Italian riders, jumps the white rails at six and seven. You just see that turn back on themselves to this log box before the first water comes. Just one pole rolled in the show jumping to add to his dressage score of 36. So a two-phase score of 40. Really nicely down there on the three strides and quickly away. As away from the start, the second of our Dutch riders, Sanna de Jong, Yarely MBF. Just looking the score to come in for Jordi Wilken who was uh, the first Dutch rider out on course haven't got that through just yet so we'll update you on it as soon as it does uh, land but uh, the Dutch down to three riders and another of those teams chasing Olympic qualification via both the uh, Nations Cup series and of course they'll have the opportunity at Harada Park as well. Some rather smart footwork in the middle element of the water at 11 for Matteo Orlando and quality in time. to these angled brushes and going the direct line oh just had second element but got it that is uh, Matteo Orlando quality in time on the short one stride a distance early on in the course at five for Sanna de Jong but unfortunately running into problems and actually popping their hand up and electing to retire it looks like it is uh, acrobate start and uh, Mario Nicolas uh, Garrido so uh, that is two Spanish riders out of the competition which means they are out of the nation's cup competition as well two riders not completing have put paid to their chances fortunately this weekend but 
also looks like a passing of company. Both horse and rider up. Feet out on course. And the horse just trotting away back across the track. It's an interesting uh, problem when you have a course such as this. And that actually is Matteo Orlando. And uh, quality in time for the Italian team. So they also are down to three riders. But good to see him up on his feet walking away. And he'll be checked out. So, uh, Matteo, unfortunately, having taken that tumble, will not uh, be able to remount and continue under the FEI rules. Harold Ambrose, Lexicon 2, now away on course, the first of his uh, two rides. And uh, Austria, a counting score for them, 31.1, their starting score in seventh uh, after the uh, first two phases. Lexicon, a horse that has really caught the eye. In the uh, both the dressage and the jumping, Harold, who is hugely, hugely experienced. Second water, and Young. And just playing it safe here, actually, going round that... Oh, and unfortunately paying the price. How unfortunate. Just deciding to uh, play it safe, in theory, and take the longer route. And just had a slip on the flat. So, so unfortunate for them. The horse uh, up on his feet. And uh, they'll both be uh, checked out. But uh, really, really unfortunate. Just slipped on the turning. And uh, good to see the horse walking away there. Sana up on her feet as well. So uh, that uh, has proven to be pretty dramatic over the last couple of horses, which means that Harold Ambrose, the only horse out on course at the moment, following the retirement of Mario Nicolas Garrido, Matteo Alandai and Sana de Jong, both passing company. Good to see them both up on their feet, walking away. And there'll be the medics on site, but unfortunately not their occasion today. Harold Ambrose, meanwhile, a lexicon on that very good score of 31.1. The clubhouse leader, remember, is Emiliano Portale on 42.8 for Italy. comes to the big log box before the first water. Time in. Just waiting for a time in for uh, Flora de Lidekirkemeyer, the first of our Belgian riders. But lexicon beautifully through the first of the waters. Harold Ambrose comes forward with Mount a little bit later on as well. away from the start it is Robin Godel for Switzerland Robin comes forward with Big Diamond owned by Odin Miller 39.7 their score coming forward Slightly wider line, but not quite outside Harold Ambrose and Lexicon, which is where we saw Sana de Jong unfortunately park company a few minutes ago. And he gets through 11 A, B, and C. Robin Godel, meanwhile, big diamond. It's uh, a young horse for him through the combination at four. Robin, who was top 25. At the World Championships in Protoni last year, won a couple of Nations Cup. Well, has a wonderful partnership with Grandeur de Lully and the Swiss team actually 
having already secured team qualification for the Paris Olympic Games. They've been reformed in recent years and have been putting on some incredible performances, particularly in the cross country under the guidance of the uh, great Andrew Nicholson. So two combinations out on course at the moment, Harold Ambrose and Robin Godel, Austria and Switzerland. Ooh, just looked to have um, had a slightly moment there, but got away with it, Robin Godel. Gets a good shot at the first of those white rails. fence and uh, the riders have to set up pretty quickly for the bank at the first water which is where most of the spectators are gathering and Robin Godel foot perfect through nine of our call Peter Hazen Bola saw that I think he'd be a very very happy man indeed because that is exactly what he would be looking for straight forward Away from the start now, Val Wimp for Belgium, Mahalia in individual silver medal position coming forward in second place on the leaderboard and another of those Belgian team counting scores too. to that skinny log in the water curving left-handed line to the corner it's a tricky question that but actually he made that look really straightforward 11 a b and c behind him the score in for roxanne gone far the first of our swiss riders she completes on 110.4. Had a couple of problems out on course. A refusal will uh, run out at 5B and 14B as well. So we're still a counting score. And the Swiss only fielded three riders here this weekend. So they had to count three scores. As uh, that was Jarno Verwimp at the early part of uh, his round. clubhouse leader, remember, is Emiliano Portale, 42.8, and he has just been overtaken by Lara de Lida Kirkenmeyer. What a round from her, 34.3 is her total score. So she goes out in front at the moment, brilliant score for the Belgian team as well, 4.4 time penalties she added on the cross country, and look to have a good bit left in the tank as well, which is very exciting for them heading towards the European Championships in her other part later on this year. Yano comes to the first of the waters, 25.7. The clubhouse leader on 34.3. That's his teammate, Lara de Liederkirk and Meyer. This is one of the Belgian team's counting scores. They've got two combinations home safely at the moment. And he uh, is very quickly away from nine. Robin Godel, meanwhile, at the final water, 18 A and B. And the C element here was one of those fences that went out when they had to make some changes to the course. They made plenty of changes this week. The weather, well, the sun is shining today. The weather over the last couple of weeks has been pretty terrible for the whole team. And they've had to make plenty of plan Bs, plan Cs. I think they're probably on about plan F at the moment. As here is the next of our Spanish riders. Marcal Pedro Patau and Volne de la Tribal. He's away on this 
Luciano comes to the water at 11A and B. Pops through there very neatly, just knocks the flag, but gets the corner. So the fastest round so far has been 10 seconds over the time. That is Emiliano Portali. Nobody has yet achieved that optimum time of 6 minutes 16 seconds. Still a long way to go, though. As Marcal uh, Pripetel will need a little at the first combination that comes up at four. Down the dip, curving left handed line. An S bend between that combination pops very neatly through. that turn back through the uh, compulsory passage. His angled brushes on the one stride. Comes up quite short, but actually has jumped pretty well so far today. white rails pops very neatly through there swings off to the right and can really open up on the accelerator prior to the big log box at eight before the first water so kicking on towards home Jano Verkrimp in second after dressage pink through the final water. Nicely the combination. Marcal Prepetal has got the last of our team riders Evelina Bertoli quick Joe this is a really important round the Italian team they were counting her score coming forward they lost Matteo Alanda out on the cross country unfortunately he had a tumble but this is one of their counting scores they dearly love to be competitive at their home nations cup leg another of those teams looking for qualification for the Paris Olympic Games Marco comes to the second water. Three strides between the first two elements and the left handed line. Almost looked like he'd logged on to the fence on the right hand side. Oh, and he scrambled over the final element, but he got it clear. There's no style points in cross country sometimes. Just getting from one side to the other, you've got to put it behind you and move on. But it's a slightly hairy moment for him there. Evelina Bertoli at the fourth. Evelina comes forward on 36.9. That leaves her in 16th place individually. But as I say, important team round for the Italian team. They could uh, overtake the Swiss with a good solid clear round here. We're going to keep you updated on those team scores as they come through. Italy so far it's been a good day at the office for them Robin goes home for the Swiss with 7.6 time he finishes on 47.3 and looks an exciting young horse for the future Big Diamond really opening up it's between Belgium and Austria at the moment but Italy are really making a play for this because the Netherlands 
have got two discard scores, Stefan Hazelanger and Sanna de Jong. So they've only got two scores to count. That proves expensive. The Swiss have got some jumping penalties cross country to count. The Spanish also have had two rides complete. So at the moment, three way battle between Belgium, Austria, and Italy. Evelina Bertoli comes to the water. brush on top of the bank actually in the water comes up really nicely if you keep on traveling up to it here is Meryl Blom and uh, Vesuve d'Avalion 44.8 and we're actually in rotation of team riders now as well so uh, Meryl heads out on course very quickly. Big table at the third. We've got uh, Evelina Bertoli, Meryl Blom, Carl Pilipatau should just be at the end of his round, a little bit further on for Spain. Brilliant to see some sunshine in Monte Libretti. The team have worked so, so hard because it has not been straightforward. The rain has made life very challenging. Oh, diving slightly. Evelina Bertoli, quick joke at the fence in the water, but they got away with it and uh, held their nerve to jump clear of the corner as well. Evelina on a score of 36.9, but remember this is a really, really important round for the Italian team because a fast clear would see them really moving up the ranks. do need to count her score, so it is imperative that she does jump clear as well. Uh, angled brushes. Meryl Blom. First of these white rails gets a lovely shot there. It's almost a chicane between those white rails at six and seven. Jump them on the angle and pops through really nicely. Meryl Blom on a score of 44.8 after the phases. Turn away from the log to the log box and then where the crowds are gathering at the water. Up the bank. Pops it really nicely and on the three strides down to the brush. The three strides there certainly been the most popular. I haven't seen anybody take the holding for and it rewards really positive riding. Well, away from our leaders after the first two phases, it is Austria's Leah Siegel and DSP fighting line, a combination that have won at this level previously. They went brilliantly well in Protoni last year at the World Championships as well. And they can be a super quick combination. So watch this space as they head out onto the cross country. to play for as uh, Meryl Blom comes to the water. Uh, looks like it is Evelina Bertoli heading towards home. So big moments for the Italian team. Nicely clear of the first water though. Or the second water I should say for Meryl Blom. Angled brushes, 14, caused plenty of throughout the week. 
But that is how they should be jumped. On the two strides on the direct line for Meryl Blom. I'll be very, very pleased with that because uh, there was a third element as well that got taken out. There was a lot of head scratching between the competitors, the officials on site as well. And it's one of those examples when actually the riders really do have their say if they're not sure about a fence and they can talk to the officials and the officials absolutely work collaboratively with them to make sure that everybody is happy when they head out of the start box with what is in front of them and huge credit to both the, the riders but also the officials and the whole team in Monte Libretti. There are plenty of challenges this week with the weather but uh, that one of those fences that actually I think having been tweaked slightly has jumped better so far than plenty of people would have expected. Leah Siegel. DSP fighting line to the first wall. Quickly up the bank, down the other side. Felix Fogg for uh, Switzerland. Martania, Darcy point for his score coming forward in fifth place on the horse that he rode at the European Championships in Avanche in 2021. Felix, a five-star winner as well, won Le Moulin last year with Calero. Just got it quite tight to the third. But uh, an enormously successful young rider has been on. Uh, podiums at the five-star level, Event Rider Masters podiums as well. Comes to the first combination at four. Pops through there very neatly. I was waiting for a couple of scores to come in for you because we're getting a real picture of the team situation as things stand at the moment. Belgium are going to take some beating. Eh? We're just waiting for their last couple of, uh, their last team rider to come forward. Karen Donkers, Fletcher van der Verhoff in a few moments. But uh, Austria, Harold Ambrose lexicon actually retired late on on course. We didn't see it on the screen, but did elect to retire so that is a very very expensive uh, addition to their score and it really knock them down the team standings which takes the pressure off Belgium significantly and it looks silly that will really capitalize that on move up the leaderboard especially because Jarno Verkwimp who was in second overnight his score and his time has just come through three seconds over the time 26.9 which means that he will be no worse than second and uh, will guarantee the belgian team at the top spot on the regardless of what happens with karen donkers who will be coming forward in a couple of horses time so belgium first nations cup leg of 2020 Certainly on my maths, but only one person can overtake Jarno at the top of the leaderboard individually, and that person is out on course. It is Leah Siegel, DSP fighting line. As here is Karen Donkers, Fletcher van Tverhoff. What a horse this has been for the Belgian team over the years. Absolutely incredible performer at the very top level. 
Worlds, uh, Olympics, Europeans. As Felix Vogue comes to the water at uh, 11 A, B, and C. Yeah. Rangy, scopy horse, this pops through there very nicely and quickly away, as smooth as any that we've seen. Just awaiting news on Leah Siegel because DSP fighting line out on course, and actually, Leah can be five seconds over the time if she jumps clear, but nothing more if she wants to take the top spot. Felix Vogue, there, you really saw him angle that box brush as he comes back to these uh, angled brush. And the horse showing all of his experience, and actually Felix showing all of his experience too, because that was very, very nicely done. And I should say her experience, Cartania Romare. Through the angled brushes at five, Karen Donkers and Fletcher Van de Verhoff. have uh, had a really successful weekend. They hold the top two placings individually on the leaderboard as things stand at the moment, but can't be beaten in the Nations Cup. Following a very comprehensive performance from all of their team members. championships surely one of the most decorated riders in the world Fletcher van de Verhoff, 18 years of age now but a, a horse that has won at this level previously there's Felix Volg on his way home with Cartania the horse's ears still pricked and traveling well as he jumps through 18 a and b the water he's got five jumping efforts remaining before home total of 52.3 should still be good enough for second for the Italian team so Belgium Italy and Switzerland the teams as they stand at the moment of course do check the official scoreboards Equi results is where all of the latest scores are being posted Karen Dixon Fletcher van de Verhoff making those angled brushes which caused plenty of people lots of headaches throughout the week look like a schooling exercise at home Very, very straightforward and a long gallop now away from 14. On to the Trikana at 15. Almost angle that as uh, away from the start. Our latest star set would be Albert Hermoso Faris. very quickly to six and
car and donkers going back through the water in the other direction towards home. That's very away from 9A, B and C. Here's Albert Hermoso Fallis and a keen about Wonderland Z. Waiting for Leah Siegel, DSP fighting line. Her score to come through as overhaul Jarno Verquim at the top of the leaderboard to take the individual uh, title. Albert quickly on to the water at 11 A, B, and C. Ooh, clever footwork in the water. The horse just himself off and said no nope, for one more in here and they get the final corner element as well another to take huge credit to the uh, teams of fence judges and volunteers in Monte Libretti who've been kept pretty busy this weekend and a time in for Leah Siegel DSB fighting line and they are going to take the top spot what a performance because uh, just one second over the time sees them finish with just 0.4 of a time penalty 24.9 is their total score and uh, they cannot be beaten so it is an Austrian victory here in uh, Italy Leah Siegel DSB fighting line winners at the level on career personal best of 24.9 ahead of uh, Jano Verwimp Mahalia who'll take second 26.9 the rest of the uh, top 10 is still to be determined Lara de Lida Kirkamaya currently sitting in provisional 10th but she's third on the clubhouse leaderboard so good number still to come through Felix Vogue a time just in for him he's 10 seconds over the time four time penalties finishes on 34.4 which actually means we can give you a provisional Swiss team score as well 192.1 and that should see the swiss team go into th in the nation's cup podium belgium of course topping that podium italy moving up from fourth coming into cross country with some very very smart cross country performances to take second and then uh, and just dropping uh, in fact holding their position they came third after dressage third after show jumping and they stay third after cross country. Alessio Proa, the first uh, of his rides. Gata Soltado at the water at nine. Nicely through that. As we head actually out of the uh, team riders now into the individual rotation Alberto Fares, the last of the Spanish riders and uh, he heads towards home Bill Levitt for Australia now the first of his uh, two rides they both produced superb show jumping rounds to have two inside the top ten this, the lesser experienced of the two, R&H Tom Tom R, owned by wife Jenny, who's out there supporting Bill, and son Josh, who's also uh, competing in one of the other international sections. And Alessia Pro at the water at 11. Through there really nicely on the three strides. A curving left-handed line to the corner. Just gets a little bit stuck on the corner there took a moment to understand the question but once he did popped it very neatly as RNH Tom Tom R Bill Levitt this uh, a nine year old at the first combination at four pop through there very nice night nicely Bill he's actually carrying a couple of cracked ribs having had a fall out here last weekend these Aussies are pretty tough aren't they and he's certainly uh, not showing it having had two very very good clear show jumping rounds and Bill 
use time to see his angled brushes actually. Um, the distance is pretty short in there. He said it, he had been watching a few in the four star long yesterday and he had every intention of just bringing it to him. It's a horse that actually would be aiming for another four star long this summer, possibly Bramham. So this run about getting a really good educational run under his belt to get the season moving. Cubertus AC, who we'll see Bill come forward on a little bit later on, the more experienced of the pair, and we could see Bill put his foot down a little bit more with him. Nobody has yet achieved that optimum time. The quickest is uh, Leah Siegel to line, who is one second over. Neatly through the first water. As away goes Pietro Maialino, Cosmo La Riviera. For Italy. And well, towards home, Alessia Ploa and Catasolto Do. I'm trying to get a, a for uh, Albert Hermoso Farris, who was not hanging around at all, a Spanish rider. We have details of it just yet. We'll bring that for you when we do. Oh, getting in quite tight to the water. Bill Levitt over that log in the middle element. R&H Tom Tom are doing a good job just getting his legs out of the way. As Pietro Maialino nicely through the combination. We're about halfway through, just over halfway through, I'd say, this uh, four-star Nations Cup competition. And if you're just tuning in, the uh, team riders have been the Nations Cup team competition has been completed and we're now onto the individual riders coming forwards all competing in the same four star section of course but those team results are being taken for the nation's cup standings it's leg one of eight in the series here this weekend next uh, riders head to chatsworth in england in derbyshire in the middle of may the week after badminton Pietro Maialino pops easily through those uh, white rails. The leaderboard, as things stand at the moment, the top two can't be beaten. Leah Siegel, DSP 5, 24.9. Here, Jano Verwin Mahalia, 26.9 in second. Then it is open to uh, discussion. We're yet to see the next few on the leaderboard come forward. One of them is out on course at the moment. That's Bill Levitt. We'll come to him in just a second. Pietro Maialino really nicely. La Verviera through the first water at nine. Here is Bill Levitt, R&H Tom Tom R at the final water. And the final element there, it was 18 ABC. The C element was one of those taken out rising team after the really difficult weather conditions. Henrik Adnovic next away with Zam F for Sweden, 36.8, his starting score coming forwards. Time in for Karen Donkers. 30.9 is her total score, so she picked up 0.8 times. And actually, that improves uh, the Belgian team score considerably. They'll finish on a sub-100 team. 
98.1 for a very victory in the Nations Cup. over Peter Hazen cross country track has certainly proved challenging nobody has achieved 6 minutes 16 seconds yet as Henrik Adnovic and Sam F nicely through the first combination at 4 And uh, those angled brushes at 5A and beyond. The pretty short one stride. Safely behind them as well. Bill Levitt should be nearly home now with R&H Tom Tom R. We'll bring you a time for him as soon as it does come through because uh, he was well in contention. Didn't look to have been the quickest. Bill sort of had his handbrake on a little bit. 12.4 time penalties, 43.7. Guarantees himself a top 20 finish and a very educational clear round in the cross country and we'll see Bill a little bit later on he'll be one of the last to go with uh, Hubertus AC in fact he will be the last to go with Hubertus AC a little bit later on so uh, back to the task in hand Pietro Maialino also heading on towards home he is at the final water with Cosmo Raviviara Heading out to the first of those waters is Henrik Adnovic. And again, the first of Henrik's uh, two rides. We'll see him with Empero a little bit later on. Absolutely enormous leap into the water and really jumped to the bottom of that bank. And he did well to keep his balance and the horse's balance there because it can always just pitch you forward a little bit on landing. Would be a is uh, only a nine-year-old and that's sometimes where you can see a little bit of an experience coming through those much much older horses they understand that there might be a little bit of uh, higher ground behind the fence and they just pop down a little bit quicker whereas some of the younger less experienced horses can sort of balloon in a little bit more they soon learn but showing plenty of boldness at this stage and did a really good job in keeping to the task in hand And uh, we've only seen one other combination take the outside corner. It didn't end well, so good to see that much more successful for Henrik. There's plenty of twisting and turning this course, and certainly you've got to give those turns the respect that they need because only too easy as we've seen already this morning to have a really unfortunate slip on the flat taking a wider line round the outside of the trees to these brushes and that means they're going to take the slightly longer route and loop round here so you've got to do some pretty creative footwork you don't want to cross your tracks which she hasn't done he hasn't done um, but it gives you much much longer to set up the second element Catherine Codham Hazrati, Oklahoma, the horse that she rode at the World Championships in Protoni last year, now away for Austria. It's a horse Catherine owns alongside Nico Hoff. 35.2 for coming forward, and I have to admit, a horse that really in the jumping yesterday. What a little pocket rocket. Very keen to get on with the task at hand. Doesn't always make life that straightforward for Catherine, it must be said, because she's just, you can see, taking the time there to have a bit of a conversation with Oklahoma, who's obviously feeling very happy to be out at the start of uh, the 2023 season. And they 
set up for the first water here at 9 A, B and C. The crowd's enjoying the very welcome sunshine in Montalibretti. And that was just a great example, actually, of a slightly more experienced horse just finding the higher ground on landing from that first element. As away from the start goes Alberto Schuni for Italy. Galway Bay Talents. Two-face score of 51. This horse owned by Alberto alongside Gordon King. That's Henrik Adnovic, the first of his two rides, heading towards home now. 36.8 was his starting score. And uh, he comes uh, on towards the finish. Pietro Maialino. Let's see if we can get a time for him. 3.6 time penalties of last round. Actually, he'll go into the top 10. Be worse, no worse than 8.36.3. So, brilliant performance from them. And I'm sure we'll see them feature on the Nations Cup team later on in the season as well. Italy, another of those nations still bidding for uh, Olympic team qualification. team qualification the highest placed team in the nation's cup series with, that hasn't already secured qualification will secure one of those golden tickets as do the two highest placed teams again that haven't secured qualification already in the european championships in Haradapin in august will also get a, a qualifying ticket and there's plenty of big names that haven't got their tickets yet. The likes of Australia, Italy, Belgium, the Netherlands, Austria as well. France get theirs. Australia is the home nation. Germany, the US, Zealand. Great Britain, Ireland, and Sweden are the eight teams, and Switzerland are the teams that have got thus far. But still, a few different uh, events with qualifying tickets on offer. which includes the likes of uh, China and Japan will go to uh, Babarithko in, uh, at the end of May, Mill Street the third Nations Cup leg actually is where the likes of Australia will be battling it out as away goes Valentine Amzon, Esther Dumele owned by Philippine Amzon for Belgium, 36.9, their two-phase score coming forwards. As Oklahoma heading towards home with Katrin Codham has Rati, 35.2. If they were clear inside the time, could go into the top 10 here, but I think could well be picking up a few time penalties. Of course, but and had to set up for a good number of the fences out on course. Just adding in a, a stride there and actually electing to take a slightly longer route at 11 A, B and C. Alberto Juni and Galway Bay Talent, but it worked for him and he's safely on his way. jump at that big box brush through the angled brushes at five Valentine Amzon and Esther Dumele for Belgium and 
then this, the really challenging angled brushes. Alberto Gini and Galway Bay Talents, I think, just took the longer route there. We've seen some rather imaginative routes from the first element to the second element. The direct line is actually angled on two strides, but we've seen plenty of people opting to take a slightly longer alternative. Valentine Emson, Esther Dumele, combination who finished sub 40 at Stragom in the four star last year to uh, in the dressage and then went on to complete for a top 20 finish inexperienced at the four star only a couple of runs for this map Here is our latest starter, Antonio Sergido Caro and Karen L, owned by Sevilla Aventa Producers. 46.1, their score coming forwards for Spain. One of uh, three Spanish riders we still have to come forward before the end of the Uni and Galway Bay Talent through the last water. Kick on towards home. Wait for a time in for Catherine Codham Hazarati and Oklahoma. Still uh, not quite confirmed. But Alberto Juni. At uh, 19 A and B, the roll top to skinny actually. It's not a fence we've seen a huge amount throughout today, but he popped through there really nicely. Karen Antonio Sajudo Caro and a horse and smear stepping up to the floor for the very first time has had some good three star results including a placing in Madrid in a three-star short as part of their preparation for this run. Neatly through those angled brushes at 5A and B. open up on the accelerator there prior to these angled white rails but then you've got to get your line right it's all about the line because actually if you go and jump them both straight it makes it quite a um, significant amount of turning whereas you can be much more economical and smooth if you angle them both heads on to swing right handed back to the log box pops over that very nicely looks to be just giving this mare a really confident but not chasing the clock 6 minutes 16 seconds the optimum time Just a little bit of going to the third element there, but they got away with it. The, the brush on top of those is really forgiving in situations such as that. As here is Gonzalo Sendrachova, 41.9, the score coming forward with Martin Hopster's Ed H. And this is a horse that actually has been at top 10 at the three star level previously. Only one former run in the four-star level of competition, but they did complete it with a clear round in the cross-country. 
just had a good number of time penalties, so all about the education on that occasion. for Katrin Kodam Hasrati, but just a, a reminder of the leaderboard as things stand at the moment. Leah Siegel for Austria, DSP fighting line, cannot be beaten. She's led from the front a career personal best, 24.9 her total score. Belgium's uh, Jano Verwim takes second, 26.9. And then there's uh, a couple of spaces on the leaderboard with horses still to come. Karen Florin Laguag, Triton Fontaine and Bill Levitt, Hubertus AC could slot into uh, third and fourth. Third in the clubhouse at the moment is Lara de Liedekerke Meyer, Ducati Darville, 34.3. And then uh, you've got uh, Felix Volkartania, 34.4. And rounding out the top five, Pietro Maialino, 36.3. It's been a very good day at the office for the Belgian team. They have convincingly won the nation's cup leg. Do check the official scoreboards for uh, confirmation but certainly Belgium have uh, themselves they could have counted any of their any three of their four team scores to still take the win and Italy put in a brilliant cross-country performance to move up to second at uh, Switzerland holding third in the uh, team standings slightly inexperienced uh, at the white rails Ed H just having a jolly good look at what was it being asked of him. Gonzalo comes round now to the big log box. Pops over that very nicely. The crowds here in Monte Libretti enjoying beautiful certainly hasn't been the case over the last they've done a brilliant job in some uh, pretty tricky weather at times as here comes the uh, first of our two French riders Thibaut Champel with his own and Angela Bernard's Calisto de Bellefond 40.0 their score coming forwards It is a four-star debut for Caristo de Belafont, as it is for this horse. This is uh, coming towards home. Carinel. Gonzalez and the Rachova. Ed H at the water. We'll just see how imposing that final corner is at 11 A, B, and C. But he gets a lovely shot of it there and quick his way. These angled brushes. As uh, Thibaut Champel, Caristo de Bellefont. Ears pricked. Real expression of enthusiasm on this horse's face. It's lovely to see how much they enjoy their job. It's a lovely angle at the first element of the white rails. up for the second of them and a slightly awkward jump but gets a, a very economical line away and uh, we'll see them swing back that 180 degree turn back on themselves you've just got to be so careful there not to uh, slip on the turn and actually you could just see Thibaut was really, really careful in making sure that the uh, 
course, almost angled that log's box slightly. Through the combination at nine at the first water. As away from the start, Karim Florent Leguag and uh, Triton Fontaine, 28.3. Their starting score. There's a horse that won the three star here last week. One of the most in the fields. And one that would dearly love to be representing his home country at a home Europeans and a home Olympic Games. He's already an Olympic gold medalist, part of the French team that won team gold in Rio. Heading on towards home now through the final water. Gonzalez Sandrachova and Ed A. Thibaut Champel, meanwhile. Gusto de Bellefonte. The two French riders following each other at the moment. They go up to the far end of the course at 14. Karim Laguag. Triton Fontaine. This is a horse that had a really tricky season in 2022 because came off the back of a top 12 finish individually at the Tokyo Olympic Games, part of the team that took the team bronze there and really would have thought systems go for Protoni and they had just a, a tricky season. They either won or had problems cross country um, and that inconsistency led to them not being selected for Protoni for the World Championships, particularly as the test event in Protoni was one of the nation's cup legs where they did have problems cross country. And then they came back with a brilliant runners up position. They finished second at Po, Les Etoiles de Po, at the five star in the end of October and looked to be back firing on all cylinders. So fingers crossed to see this combination back to their best in 2023. Triton Fontaine, 15 years of age. Karim Florent Laguag, who is such a brilliant character. Ooh, very tight turn, and it resulted in a slightly uncomfortable jump to the log box, but he's obviously looking at that time. Six minutes, 16 seconds. Nobody's achieved it yet. If he can go clear inside the time, then he would secure himself a podium finish here. 28.3, his total score. As uh, Thibaut Champel been really impressed by this young combination out on course. Caristo de Bellefonte, 11 year olds, and uh, they've been very, very smart in all three phases. Thibaut Champel heading on towards home as Karim uh, Laguag, Triton Fontaine quickly through the first couple of elements and actually another to just take a slightly wider line for that corner but gets it very well. Be interesting to see what this combination do up at the angle brushes. Surely, surely they'll go straight. It's been a fence that's caused plenty of discussion. There was... Uh, a real shim between the officials and the ground jury and the riders. And in the end, they tweaked it to have two angled brushes and another to make it look like a schooling exercise. He came off that turn, popped through it on the two strides, and there's a really acute angle. That is a proper four-star test up there. And Triton Fontaine one of the more experienced horses in the field, admittedly, but made it look very, very easy indeed. This tricana here, actually, you just get a lovely shot of how you angle it to make sure that your turn away from the fence is as smooth as possible. And that's one of the things about cross-country riding. 
sometimes you have to think a little bit outside of the box in terms of rather than just going straight to a fence and then making the turn afterwards because those small angles can make not only the round so much more smooth but also it saves you so much time as well and Triton Fontaine is not hanging around here are we about to see the first horse go inside the time on Peter Hazen Bowler's uh, cross country track 6 minutes 16 seconds the optimum at the uh, final water pops in very nicely very well done quickly away and interestingly he doesn't look to be chasing away from that water which could well mean that he feels very comfortable on the clock he can afford to be a, afford to be a few seconds over and still hold on to his third place because uh, he's on 28.3 bill the levitt who's still to come is on 30.7 so he's got a little bit of time in hand as well as away from the start Costanza Mantici and uh, Daisy's Diamante come forward on 50.2 Costanza owns at Daisy Diamante a horse that uh, has certainly looked full of enthusiasm over the last couple of days that know each other so well the horse's entire international career has been with Costanza in the in the seat as we wait to see a score come in for Karen Florin Laguag Triton Fontaine they're heading towards the last couple of fences and we'll update you with it as soon as possible. Costanza Mantici, meanwhile, at the first question at four. The ground really dips away there and you sort of come up a hump on that left-handed turn to the rails at the top. Daisy's Diamante, a horse that... Uh, was just outside the top 20 in the uh, four star short here end of last year had a win internationally at the uh, two star level last year also went uh, very well and actually looks like popping their hand up and deciding to call it a day obviously feeling something isn't quite right Daisy's Diamante and a Costanza Mantici but they have elected to retire out on course before fence five so uh, unfortunately they will be walking home discretion sometimes the better part of valour and uh, making that call still mounted so uh, doesn't obviously feel that there's anything too dramatically wrong with the horse which is great to see they'll both no doubt be checked out by uh, the brilliant brilliant teams here any horse that comes back off the cross country always picked by an excellent veterinary team there's a fantastic team of FEI stewards as well Gillian Kyle, a hugely experienced technical delegate in charge of the competition this weekend, alongside our ground jury of Maria Schacchetti, James Rooney and President Seppo Lane. As here comes uh, for the Netherlands, Mara van der Ven, Lexington van der Winkenhof, 42.3, their score coming forwards. clear of the uh, big box brush there 
I'm setting it looking like they mean business. Six minutes, 16 seconds, the optimum time. I haven't had anybody achieve it so far. The closest has been Leah Siegel, our winner. SB fighting line who've led from the front. They led the dressage. They uh, left all the poles standing in the show jumping. And uh, one second over the time cross country to finish on 24.9. Anna Verwimp, part of the Belgian team, who secured a very convincing win in the Nations Cup. 26.9 have secured second. Third at the moment is teammate Lara de Liedekerke Meyer, Ducati Darville, 34.3. But we are still waiting for that time to come in of Karim Florin Leguag, Triton Fontaine, who could well slot into third on the leaderboard at the moment. We've got around uh, eight or nine combinations left to go. We do hope that you're enjoying all of the coverage here on FEIT. We've got plenty more in store for you throughout the rest of the year. The next FEI Eventing Nations Cup Exworth, Derbyshire in England. The uh, weekend after Badminton, the 15th and 16th of May. Then the series turns its attention to Mill Street at the beginning of June. But we've got plenty of eventing action for you as well. The Spring Open from Stragom will be live for you on Clip My Horse. And uh, if you're into your jumping, then this weekend today, the first Rolex Grand Slam event of the year. The Dutch Masters in St. Ogenbosch. Uh, Daniel Deusser won it 12 months ago with Scuderia 1918 Tobago Z. The highest rated horse in the world on the Echo Ratings Elo is back to defend his title. But he's also joined by the likes of McLean Ward and Azure, who won the last Rolex Grand Slam in Geneva so it is uh, going to be quite the battle as a top class field including the likes of world champions Henrik von Eckermann and King Edward and that will be live for you on Clip My Horse this afternoon really nicely done big pats through the first water for Mara van der Ven and Lexington van der Vinkenhof as next away Cecilia Lundberg for Norway with Cascor, who she owns alongside Kathleen Handen Lumberg. 44.5, their two phase score coming forward. That left them in 35th position after the uh, first two phases, but still, it has not been a dressage competition. The jumping has proven plenty influential. There were only seven clear rounds yesterday in the show jumping. And. Uh, Today's cross country has certainly provided plenty of drama as well. Heartbreak for the Dutch team, for the Austrian team, Spanish team as well in the Nations Cup. All uh, picking up problems which push them off the podium. Nicely done through that second water at 11 A, B and C. Mara van der Ven and Lexington van der Vinkenhof. to these angled brushes to be taking the direct route pop through see they've actually jumped really direct route uh, they've jumped really nicely on the two strides we've seen plenty of people electing to take a slightly more circuitous route but actually those uh, that have been brave and taken the direct line have jumped them really nice Mara van der Ven goes on as Cecilia Lundberg threw the horse's head, brush shoulders at 5, A and B. Cecilia. At these angled white rails. through there really nicely gets a lovely shot at the second right handed angle and then we'll scoot back to the right away from the lorry park away from the warm up to that big log box 
and the fast of the waters. At nine A, B and C. a little bit of a look down the hill to that final brush as away from the start another ride for Alessia Pra and dollar boy nine this time 41.1 their score coming forward Alessia already had one round across the country a little bit earlier on just picked up 20 penalties with a run out at the second of those brushes. But uh, otherwise a good round. Dollar boy nine coming forward on 41.1. on the four strides up at the water and taking that really big corner off the left-handed line very well at 11 A, B and C. That's uh, Cecilia Lundberg and Cascor, Mara van der Ven, Lexington van der Winkenhof on their debuts at the level are heading on towards home. Alessia Pro comes back to the uh, Angle brush shoulders at five A and B. And a time in for Karim Florin Laguag and uh, Triton Fontaine. It was a fast round, two seconds over the time, 0 0.8 time penalties, 29.1 means that the podium sees that them. In third, Karen Florin Laguag goes third with Triton Fontaine. The win will go to Austria's Leah Siegel. 24.9, a convincing victory led from the front. Jano Verquimp in second, 26.9. A uh, couple of penalties behind. And then Triton Fontaine for Karen Florin Laguag just slotting into third now. So that is the podium. Next on the leaderboard is Lara de Liederkirk and Maya de Cati Darville. She'll be no worse than fourth at the moment the only person that can go ahead of her is bill levitt hubertus ac who will see come forward in a few horses time alessia plower on to nine a b and c red and white house actually designer lets them land on dry land and that horse you could see was really clever just had a little bit of a look over when he took off understood where he could put his feet down as away goes Harold Ambrose Mount Batten 2 for Austria Harold but we saw a little bit earlier on with Lexicon things didn't quite Go to plan there. They had a retirement late on in the course, which was a real shame for them and for the Austrian team. But Cecilia Lundberg is heading on towards home. Cascor has been absolutely fantastic out on the cross country. They just have the five jumping efforts remaining. Mara van der Ven, I believe, is home safely. clear of the influential water at 11 a b and c that corner has caught one or two out so far today and this uh, angled brushes up at the top is where he had a problem on his first ride not the most comfortable of jumps through four for harold ambrose and mount batten too but they're clear just four more combinations to leave the start box one for spain Fernandes, one for Sweden in Henrik Adnovic, one for Belgium in Karen Donkers, and one for Australia in Bill Levitt. As we reach the climax of this uh, four star short here in Monte Libretti, the first FEI Eventing Nations Cup leg of 2023. And what a competition it has been throughout the uh, 
four days we've been on air on FEI TV. We do hope you've enjoyed it all. It has certainly seen some uh, top class horse and rider combinations that we'll see a lot more of throughout the season and some real young stars of the future as well. Harold Ambrose, Mountbatten 2 at the white rails. More experienced of uh, Harold's two rides here this weekend. Was uh, fifth in Stragom in the four star short there last summer. It's also been uh, just outside at the four star long level of competition at Babarusko. Six runs previously at the four star short level of competition and through the first cup water at nine. First of three waters out on course, in fact. Our course designer for this four star short here in Monte Libretti, Peter Hazenbola. As Alessia Plower heads on towards home. Five jumping efforts remaining as uh, away from the start. Is uh, our latest starter to join us? A couple of really nice, inviting fans. Just to get into a rhythm, settles them into the course. real question comes up here at fence for the house then that curving right handed line down the slope up the bank the other side up over those rails and really nicely done So six minutes and 16 seconds, that optimum time. The fastest round of the day, Leah Siegel, TSP fighting line. 24.9 is their total score. Oh, a slightly uncomfortable jump through the angled brushes at five. A lovely pat down the neck. Just uh, instilling the confidence. The horse was really honest. Comes up quite tight at one stride. And sometimes you need a little bit of clever footwork in cross country. It's never going to be perfect all of the time. So when it's not perfect, or you're not on the perfect distance, you want your horse to be able to respond accordingly and get themselves out of trouble. Nicely through those curving white-handed gates. And they've got this turn back to the log box before the first of the waters at nine. Harold Ambrose, Mountbatten two towards home. He's got five jumping efforts left. You see him just heading away from that final water. Really well done through all three elements there on that right-handed line. So just three combinations to come forward to the cross-country phase here in Monte Libretti. The first of eight legs in the FEI Eventing Nations Cup Series in 2023. Count their best seven scores. And the team that have got off to an absolute flyer this weekend are Team Belgium because they've taken the top spot on the Nations Cup podium. 
finishing ahead of Italy in the silver medal spots and Switzerland in the bronze medal spot. That's on my maths on the team standings. Do, of course, check the official scoreboard's equi results for confirmation. Really tight line through the second of the waters at 11 A, B and C. And quickly away, you can just see how much the ground has cut up over the last couple of weeks with the amount of rain that organisers have done such a good job in uh, chopping and changing they're significantly down the alphabet in terms of what plan they're on I think but they've worked tirelessly in order to make it happen and just taking the slightly longer route here looks to be playing it safe we've seen a few people do this means going out to the left and then scooping back round and coming round to the right and you just got to be a little bit imaginative to make sure you don't cross your tracks which they absolutely didn't and that just cost them a little bit of time but obviously just choosing to play it a little bit safe This trichina. Big trichina. And the ground really drops away on landing as you see that. You want to angle it off to the right. Just helps you get your line then. As you gallop away from that. On to the skinny roll tops at 16A and B. We haven't seen this fence a huge amount today. But it has jumped pretty well. Quite a nice inviting fence off the left handed turn. And then running down the slope. Gets a good shot at the second of those. And then a, quickly again, you're off round to the right. Twisting and turning. Pops nicely clear of the uh, big table. As uh, away from the uh, start, the penultimate combination to go. Karen Donkis with Ceres de la Brasserie. Owned by Michel and Jacques Pellot. 37.2, their starting score. And actually, Karen already had one really super round across the country. She's guaranteed a, a top 10 finish with the uh, seasoned campaign of Fletcher van der Berehoff, part of the Belgian team, who have secured that top spot on the podium this weekend. As Henrik Adnovic and uh, Empero head on towards home. It's been a really good confidence-building round from that combination. 38.7 was the score they started on. That was their dressage and show jumping total combined. I think there'll be a few time penalties as well, but it's been a good jumping performance for them. It's Karen Donkers. So there's De La Brasserie. Comes to the first question on course at four. And that right-handed bend down the dip, up the bank, and pops really neatly clear of the rails at the top. That's jumped very well so far today. And then this part of the course, you see where the loop was there? That They have to loop so far out into the field because there's a pair of compulsory flags that every competitor must go through. That's because that's where it is in order to get the distance to comply with a four star short level of competition because of the changes that the team had to make to the course because of the ground and, and course that weren't usable with the bad weather. They included a set of flags that meant that uh, competitors couldn't loop too close to the hedge. They had to go through those. If they'd have uh, omitted to go through them, then it would have been elimination, the same as if you had omitted to have jumped a fence. But touch wood, we've only got one left to go. Nobody has made that error so far today. Really beautifully done. Karen Donker showing all of her experience. Smooth as silk with Ceres de la Brasserie through the rails at six and seven. And we should have just one more starter preparing to get their round underway. That'll be Bill Bertus AC. He'll be out on course in just a second. It's 
apparent comes to the first of those waters. Up the bank. One, two, three strides to the brush at the uh, sea element. We had an early faller there, but otherwise it's jumped really well, that first water. Here is Bill Levitt, Hubertus AC. The more experienced of his two rides, a horse that has been just outside the top 20 at Blenheim, completed, I think it was Mill Street four-star long as well last season. And a horse, I believe, that is aimed to head to badminton this spring. So really exciting as part of their preparation. They've chosen to come out here to Monte Libretti. The course is really educational and a good early run this part of the season. Will do them no harm at all. This is uh, a horse that really caught the eye in the show jumping yesterday, actually. Bill's had a couple of really nice rides here as Karen Donkers pops nicely through the first uh, two elements of the water at 11. Right, left-handed bend. Easily done through four for Bill. And Hubertus AC. This is a horse that uh, Bill owns himself. Alongside uh, long-time supporters Keith Tyson and Elizabeth Murdoch. He's on a score of 30.7. And that would actually, if he is clear and pretty quick, would see him stay in fourth place on the leaderboard. He'd have moved up from uh, sixth after jumping. Let's have a look what he can do on the clock, because uh, 34.3 is Lara de Lida Kirkenmeyer. She's currently in fourth on the clubhouse leaderboard. And uh, 3.6 time penalties is what Bill could afford, which accounts to... Nine seconds. quickly away from the log box before the water at nine. Really easily done. Made that look very straightforward. And actually, Bill pushes him away from that fence now, really upping the speed. And it's coming back in the other direction, heading towards home. Karen Donkers, Ceres de la Brasserie at the final water. Careful jump in over the first of those logs. Slightly curving right-handed line to the second of the logs on the bank. But she pops over that very nicely. Here is uh, Henrik Adnovic and Empero. Henrik just jumping a little bit out of order. Because uh, he had uh, another ride a little bit earlier on, Zam F. Very easily clear of the first three. So he will be the last to go out of the start box in this uh, four-star Nations Cup in Monte Libretti. What a competition we've enjoyed over the last four days. As he pops really nicely through that first combination at four. Just uh, makes that turn back towards these two angled brushes. The horse's heads, of course, 
Many will have seen all and runs into problem at the first. And actually looks to have popped his hand up and decided to call it a day. That's quite unusual because actually they've jumped really well so far today. The horse just ground to a halt in front of the first element and unfortunately not their occasion. So a pat down the neck and they'll so save themselves for another time. So Henrik Adnovic unfortunately walking home with uh, Empero. So just uh, Karen Donker's nearly home with uh, Ceres de la Brasserie. She should be about through the finish flags now, which means that our attention solely is on this man, Australia's Bill Levitt, Hubertus AC. 30.7 his score coming forward. He can afford to be nine seconds over the time and still hold his position and take fourth on the leaderboard. As he comes to the final water, he wanted to come here and get some really good FEI points on the board with this horse, who I'm sure we will see feature for Australia at other events throughout the season. Australia, one of those teams that really do need to secure Olympic qualification. Their big chance will come at Mill Street, the beginning of June. They haven't chosen to send a team here to the Nations Cup in Montalabretti. This is the final combination. Those angled brushes pops through there very neatly and Bill can kick on towards home now. It'll be interesting to see his time. And he cl uh, clears the last. Home safely, Bill Levitt, Hubertus AC. Brilliant weekend at the office for Bill. And uh, he comes home with no jumping penalties to add. We'll update you with details of his time when it uh, arrives. But the win goes to Austria. Leah Siegel, DSP fighting line. 24.9, a career personal best finishing score. Ahead of uh, Jano Verwimp and uh, Mahalia for Belgium. 26.9. Triton Fontaine, Karim Florent Laguag back to their best. 29.1 completing the individual standings the team podium belgium come out on top they take the first fei venting nations cup leg of 2023 then it is the home nation italy move up to second and switzerland round out the podium that's all from us here in monte we'll be back very soon 